hides us and scatters us. It sinks too high for me. You know, sometimes, sometimes when we come to the church, we should understand there's a difference between Paul and Peter. See where Paul is coming from, from the ivory tower. And see where Peter is coming from, from the seashore. See where John is coming from, and then see where others are coming from, and see Matthew here. What was Matthew doing? Matthew was a tax collector, and he was the accountant of a local government in Israel doing that for Rome. And he would give proper account, and he didn't lose his job. And here we find Judas Iscariot, and we know Judas Iscariot. How do you make Judas as God the treasurer? And you don't take Matthew as the treasurer. Matthew says, that doesn't bother me. Yes, I know. And that's my profession. I know I'm qualified to do that, but does it bother me? Christ is wiser than I. And he has made Judas as carried. See, what a great mistake. Don't talk to me that Jesus made a mistake. He put Judas as carried there. That's all right for me. Whatever is all right for Jesus is okay for me. That's why they were united. But you know, if we are saying, I must be there. I should have been there. I should have been standing there. I should have been doing that. There'll be no unity. You're looking at how great you are, how knowledgeable you are, how wise you are, how important you are. And you say, even in the world, look at what I was doing. And look at where I was. And look at my achievement. And I come to the church and they put this one there and put that one there. Who are these people? I can put this things right. And without anybody putting you there, you are there already. And But David said, I do not exercise myself in great matters and in things too high for me. That's what keeps us together in unity. I'm looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Being of one accord and of one mind. That's the fellowship and that's the unity. Have you found people saying, we're coming together, we're having a meeting together? And as we're having a meeting together, everything is quiet. Brother so-and-so has spoken, sister so-and-so has spoken, the other person has spoken. And then the person who is moderating is saying, now we are, we're going to bring this to a conclusion because we've had enough uh, contribution. Right? Somebody say, hey, I'm here. I need to give you a piece of my mind before we go on. Because so-and-so has, so-and-so has spoken a piece of your mind. You know what? When you give a piece away, a piece away, you almost, you know, you give everything away. That's why people say, I lost my mind. You've given away everything piece by piece. Why don't you keep that peace of mind? Because other people have spoken. And be of one mind. What are you going to say different from what brother so-and-so said? What are you going to say different from what sister so-and-so said? If they have said it, must we register your voice? But you still say something, even though it's exactly the same thing others have said, our fellowship will be there and there will be unity when there is humility. And then it says in verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, that's humility, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things. But every man also on the things of others, let this mind be you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant. And he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He did what? Humbled himself. That's Christ the highest and the greatest and the holiest and the saintliest a savior our lord and he humbled himself and it says and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross 
Look at this, uh, chapter 2 of Philippians. I'm reading to you from verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Christ's. Those are the people that cause problem in the fellowship and in the family of God. All seek their own. To seek their own, their own advantage. As long as you put hard there to be in charge, everything will be all right. If you want to train other people, if you want to bring up other people, if you want to develop other people, if you want to give opportunity and chance to other people, and say, my dear sister, you are doing well, and this is great. If we have 10 of you in the church, will be will fly to the skies will reach the top of the mountain in no time but if you're doing it every time we're not going to be able to develop other people can you please give chance to this other sister and then you are going to see that that number one who was there everything was going on fine when she was there and now you replace that because you need to train other people and because you need to bring up other people you're going to find the whole thing is scattered if she is not there if he is not there controlling directing managing driving leading then everything is going to scatter and that's what paul the apostles they said i'm sending Timothy son to you because he'll do it naturally he has the grace and everything will just flow naturally but you know these other people they seek their own i pray you'll not be like that for the sake of the unity of the church and for the sake of the fellowship of the people of God, like-minded people, you'll be able to give way to all the people and allow them to do what they ought to do. And then it says, but in verse 22, ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, not as a servant of the master, as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I'm reading verse 3. Now, we're all familiar with verses 1 and 2. Every time you open to Romans chapter 12, you're reading verses 1 and 2. Have you ever considered verse 3? Romans chapter 12, verse 3, but I, for I say, through the grace given unto me to every man, to how many people? Every man. That's to you and to me, to everyone. To every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's what will bring fellowship and true unity. Not to think of himself. Not to think of herself. Not to think of his brother. What I mean by his brother is close relative. Not to think of the person in his tribe. Not to think of the fellow from his country. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, if you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.